Short news. EU has finally agreed to use windfall profit from frozen Russian assets to support Ukraine. It is estimated it will bring 15 to 20 billion euros by 2027. The first payout is expected in July. Sweden has announced that they will give 6.5 billion euros in military support over the coming three years, until 2026. Total pledged Swedish aid will then be 8.62 billion euro. The situation on the ground. Weather today. Kharkiv, partly cloudy, 27 degrees Celsius. Svartov, partly cloudy, 28 degrees Celsius. Donetsk City, partly cloudy, 28 degrees Celsius. Kherson City, partly cloudy, 28 degrees Celsius. The Ukrainian general staff reported 112 combat engagements in the last 24 hours. North of Kharkiv. Russian attacks reported at Lipsy, Vovchansk, Staritsya, and Prilipka. Ukrainian attacks reported at Vovchansk and Staritsya. Assessment. We have ongoing fighting, but the intensity of fighting seems to be diminishing somewhat in this area. We have reports that the Ukrainian artillery situation is improving here. That is a likely confirmation that Western aid is starting to reach Ukrainian forces in some volume. We have several Ukrainian counterattacks reported, likely indicating that Ukraine is able to locally gain some initiative. North of Liptis, we have no confirmed Russian gains. We have confirmed limited Russian gains at Vovchansk. We can expect fighting to continue here over the coming weeks. I assess the situation as stabilized. Kupiansk, and west, northwest of Svartov area. A Russian attack reported at Sinkivka, Ivanivka, Berestov, and Stelmakivka. Assessment. Ongoing fighting here, but no confirmed gain since yesterday. We likely have ongoing heavy Russian attacks here. Considering the overall picture, Ukrainian forces are likely under some pressure. Based on previous Russian gains, in what areas they have been made, what the possible strategic implications they can have, together with the likelihood of Western aid starting to reach Ukrainian forces in bulk. I assess the situation as stabilized to stable. While Russian forces can gain some tactical ground here, unless that is made north of Kupiansk, it will not have any strategic implications. Kremina area. Russian attacks reported at Makivka, Biloharivka, Dibrova, Terny, and Hryharivka. Assessment. We have confirmed limited Russian gains south of Makivka. We have ongoing Russian attacks along the sector from Makivka down to Biloharivka. We have Russian claims that they have captured Biloharivka, and Russian counterclaims that they have not. The important ground in that area is the high ground just west of Biloharivka, which is under Ukrainian control. Fighting is ongoing, no major changes. Expect ongoing pressure. As the Ukrainian artillery situation improves, we can expect increasing Russian losses. I assess the situation as stable for now. Sivusk salient. Russian attacks reported at Vyimka, Rostolivka, Biloharivka, Ryharivka, Veseli, and Spurn. Assessment. Ongoing Russian attacks all along the salient, no confirmed gains. We have Russian sources claiming to have gained ground south of Sivusk, but that is not confirmed, and unlikely at this time. We also have Russian sources stating Russian attacks are gaining no ground, but suffering significant losses. I assess the situation as stable. Bakhmat area. Russian attacks reported at Klishchivka, Chasiv Yar, Ivanivsky, and Andreevka. Assessment. We have ongoing Russian attacks with confirmed limited Russian gains northeast of Chasiv Yar. We also have confirmed Russian gains at Klishchivka, with Russian forces moving inside the settlement. Ukraine still holds the high ground west of that position, so in all likelihood, it is still contested. Heavy fighting is ongoing, and is expected to continue over the coming week. Russian gains are limited, and have not changed the overall situation. At this time I assess the situation as stable. Ukrainian forces are likely under heavy pressure, so this assessment is not a long-term assessment. North of Donetsk City. Russian attacks reported at Yevgenivka, Sokol, Novosilivka Pasha, Netolov, Yasnobrodivka, Nevolska, Novooleksandrivka, Umansky, and Novobakmutivka. 
We have positional fighting reported at Kalinov, Novo Oleksandrivka, Sokil, Praws, Yevanivka, Okeratine, Solovyov, Novo Silivka Pasha, Umanska, Netolov, Yasno Brodivka, and Nevelska. Assessment Extremely heavy fighting reported, with multiple Russian attacks and positional fighting ongoing all along this sector. We have confirmed limited Russian gains northwest of Semenivka, direction Sokil. We also have confirmed limited Russian gains at Netolov, direction south. In that area, Russian forces are likely trying to expand the area of control along the road from Netolov to Pervomaisk. The overall situation has not changed, but Russian pressure is very heavy. The situation is assessed as stabilized at this time. Considering Russian pressure, and limited, but ongoing Russian gains, this can only be considered a short-term assessment. I cannot assess the situation here, with high confidence, past the coming days. West of Donetsk City Russian attacks reported at Krasnoharivka, Pobeda, Hiorhivka, Novomykhailivka, and Paraskovyevka. Assessment General Russian attacks reported direction west. We have confirmed limited Russian gains in the Paraskovyevka, Novomykhailivka area. The overall situation has not changed. I assess the situation as stabilized to stable at this time. This means some limited Russian gains are possible to probable, but any significant Russian gains that could change the overall situation is unlikely. Orykiv area. We have positional fighting reported at Robotine and west of Verbov. Assessment. It looks unlikely that Russia has taken Robotine, but that position is likely contested. No Russian attacks reported could be significant. For now, I assess the situation as stable, but it is probable that Russian attacks will continue here in some force over the coming weeks. And very probable that Russia will assert pressure here over the coming eight weeks. Conclusions We have confirmed reports that more artillery ammunition is reaching Ukrainian forces at least north of Kharkiv. That would indicate that Western aid is starting to reach some Ukrainian forces in volume. We can expect the Ukrainian artillery situation to continue improving over the coming weeks. Russian attacks seem to be diminishing north of Kharkiv. Some Russian gains, but they are still limited. On the rest of the front, some minor changes reported, but the overall situation has not changed. Russian losses are still very high, but seem to be decreasing somewhat, which would follow an overall reduction in Russian pressure. Russian attacks are still very heavy, but the last offensive operation by Russia has likely peaked in intensity. Russian equipment losses are still quite high, which will become harder for them to replace over the coming years. We can expect ongoing Russian attacks at quite a high level in the coming week. Ukraine has managed to slow down threatening Russian attacks, inflicting significant Russian casualties. The overall situation is currently stable. Ukraine has several tactical positions that are very difficult, but even there the situation is by no means critical at this time. End of report.